So, welcome to this lecture on advanced uh, digital system design in the course uh, digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. In the last lecture we have uh, looked at how to go about designing a complex system like a CPU. We have taken an example of an 8 bit microprocessor. Uh, we have said that it cannot be designed in, in a flat way in one shot. It has to be partitioned into, into functional blocks uh, which requires domain knowledge and we have to decide on the interface between this block. Then at the next level, I mean at that level, top level we have to decide the function, timing, all that. At the next level we will handle each block separately and try to design and go to the third level. And when we are um, kind of we end up with the known blocks like registers and multiplexers and counters, uh, then we can stop you know that uh, the neat way of designing. Um, in the industry we call it um, RTL design. Um, the same, same. it is same what I am talking about. Uh, we have looked at um, the example of the CPU, we have seen uh, the level 0 block diagram, level 1 uh, partition and then for the level 2 we have picked up uh, 2 blocks. One was uh, the register, CPU register uh, which is fairly simple. Then we have taken a program counter and uh, designed it in, in detail and um, we have also discussed the, the, the division of the data path and the controller um, to bring clarity. Uh, so that is what we have covered in the last uh, lecture and today uh, we are going to look at the, the behavior of the controller and we will try to uh, from that behavior uh, from that idea we will try to uh, kind of come out with a structure for the uh, the uh, the controller and uh, look at um, the the properties and and check what a whether a generic architecture which fits for all cases uh, whether we can come out with such a thing you know from from this we are working out little bit backwards uh, from an example uh, to the basic normally. Uh, in a textbook uh, the other way is done and which is sometimes uh, difficult to uh, kind of uh, understand at the beginning because we learn something formally uh, the structure and you try kind of later on apply or sometimes the textbook does not show the, the serious application it only deals with very simple cases and uh, then it does not bring clarity that is why I am kind of uh, going from an example and kind of working backwards um, and that brings clarity so that is the idea. So before turning to today's uh, part on the controller we will have a brief look at uh, the last lectures part uh, then we will move on to today's part. So let us move on to the, the slides of the last uh, lecture and uh, so we have looked at an 8 bit microprocessor. Uh, but the thing was that it has um, 8 bit ALU data bus, 16 instruction, 64 address space, 64 KB address space which means 16 bit uh, program counter and stack pointer. Uh, the controller is hardwired not micro coded, no separate IO space and so on okay. So and we said that we have to partition uh, this into blocks with interfaces. We have to do a top down design at each level, we have to handle the functional timing and electrical aspects of it and um, so we have looked at the, the top level which is CPU with clock reset interrupt as input, read bar, write bar, address as output and data as, as a kind of um, bidirectional pin. And we said this is a kind of we have decided you now you have to decide on the functionality we said this is there is no kind of pipelining. So it fetches uh, then decodes execute then it goes and fetch it. So it makes it multiple clock cycle CPU for one instruction to execute it takes multiple clock cycle. 
uh, it's not very current design you know the current nobody design like that uh, the CPU can be uh, designed for a single clock cycle operation in most cases so uh, but we are we are just trying to kind of um, to, to grasp the basic so we stick with it and when it comes to the timing spec and of course you have to decide what are the instructions which are supported what is the instruction format and so on but we will not get into that kind of detail and our idea is in the process of you know design how the design process goes on and uh, this you can refer to some uh, book good uh, reference book some books on microprocessor or you can computer architecture there is a good bo good book by Hennessy and Patterson on computer architecture two volumes are there both deals with uh, the CPU design in detail and here uh, the clock uh, reset interrupt has some basic timing uh, the clock may have some duty cycle the frequency the reset has some timing interrupt will have you have to decide whether it is a level triggered edge triggered uh, or both and what is the timing pulse width and so on and one important timing detail is the bus cycle um, how this, uh, this bus uh, is kind of behaves whether it is synchronous asynchronous uh, how many clock cycles it take, takes and so on. So and these are the and the electrical spec because these are to kind of support lot of load and this should have enough sourcing and syncing of the current and we have seen uh, the second level of uh, partition level 1 wherein there is an internal data bus, instruction register, decoder. Uh, temporary register, ALU, uh, set of registers, program counter and stack pointer. Everything is connected to a single bus in the, the current high performance CPUs it may have multiple buses so that and all, all the high performance CPUs will have multiple buses that means uh, the registers can feed the ALU, ALU can feed back the register and while that is going on instructions can come on to the, the instruction register and so on okay or an instruction. Uh, FIFO or a Q, uh, so so many things can go in parallel, and that will be synchronized and so on. And we said there is a difference. One is a data path where the data moves or the computation happens, and there is a controller which sequences all the operation. Okay, so this partition is very good because when you functionally partition it, you don't have to worry about the sequencing of of operation. You can concentrate on the functionality, concentrate on the interface and the timing details can be worked out later you know like in what sequence or these control signal come that can be decided later and the, the controller's job is to give the sequence operation, give the control signal, latch signal, enable signal and select a MUX path uh, to, to enable data into a particular path and so on. So that is a job of the controller and we said in a synchronous case you need only one controller if everything is synchronous. But if there are kind of two concurrent activities which is not synchronous to each other then you need controller to, to handle two concurrent activities which are not synchronous okay. And but in any case in a, in a very complex scenario it is very difficult uh, to manage with a single controller for modularity ease of designing and debugging and testing and all that it will be ideal sometime you have multiple controllers handling the multiple parts and a, a top level controller coordinating with the, the bottom level uh, controller. So as in a top down approach you can even imagine uh, you could have uh, the second level partition some of the blocks together having you know separate controller and so on you know that can be thought of. One can think of a hierarchy of controller, so there is a top level controller which is you know coordinating the, the second level controllers and so on. So that is a data path and controller and we have picked up an example of a register and we have designed it, um, seen the design in detail. So the, the, the idea of register is that it should be connected, output should be connected to the data bus when it is enabled 
the data should come similarly when the latch signal from the controller comes and the clock comes the data get latched and we have seen a, a kind of uh, circuit for that say this is a possible circuit 8 flip flops clock is common and the input and output is connected together through a tri state gate to the same data bus and the clock and the latch signal is, is handed together so that when the latch signal comes only then the clock comes. So at this level we know all the components flip flops and gate and registers the design is over okay and that can be coded in a VHDL or Verilog things like that. But as the note says there is a little timing issue with it because we are handing it if it is not proper uh, there could be multiple pulses here and we will see that later you know that, that issue can be handled later. So there is another possibility which avoids it that means you do not do anything with the clock path clock goes continuously and that is problematic because every clock the data gets latched so we have to take care of that. So the idea is to put a 2 to 1 mux and when the latch signal comes the input goes directly when it is 0 it is recirculated okay that is that is the basic idea and the next thing we have looked at was a program counter uh, which has various operation uh, the data when a jump or a call comes the address has to be latched in you know byte by byte when there is a call the, the return address is stored back again 16 bit register byte by byte it has stored back and then the latch signal so there are two uh, 8 bits registers inside which are separate uh, I mean this has to be handled properly there are different input paths one is from the data one is an increment path one is a reset address one is interrupt address so that is this input select output select is when uh, the both address need to be transferred to the data bus you have to select a byte by byte so that is a, the address output select then the enable for the output to be connected to the data bus and that drives the address bus and we have seen a, a possible design so you have two 8 bit registers which has latch same latch and we have a temporary register uh, to transfer the, the least significant byte because the address come least significant byte first and the most significant byte. So first it is transferred which has a latch signal separate from the controller then when the MSB comes this particular green path is selected and both together this least significant byte and the most significant byte coming on the data bus is latched simultaneously on here. Uh, so the latch signal is common for both and when it is need to be incremented it is incremented this way and this red and blue path is selected and is latch pack. When the reset comes this address is loaded parallelly interrupt comes that is loaded and uh, when the program counter output need to go to the data bus this particular MUX uh, operates with the, the enable and this is the address uh, bus being driven by the, uh, the, the program counter. So uh, it basically means 3 8 bit registers. 2 4 to 1 um, 8 bit MUX, uh, 2 uh, I mean 1 2 to 1 8 bit MUX, 8 tri state gate and 1 16 bit 2 to 1 MUX uh, the design is over this can be easily coded okay. So that is how we, we design and we said so essentially it has to be top down design any complex system and you should have the domain knowledge and you should. Um, at each level you have to look at the functionality, timing, electrical characteristics, maybe power dissipation where it is critical. Nowadays everything um, most devices are mobile or uh, which can be kind of uh, transported and that needs a battery and which um, is better if the power dissipation is, is controlled. And there are many devices now sensors which is kind of uh, installed in one place which, which is happening which is supposed to work over long years so uh, the low power dissipation is very important. So let us come to today's part, uh, today's part we are going to look at the controller uh, this part how, what is the behavior of it, what is the structure of it, maybe possible 
uh, uh, an introduction about how to go about uh, designing it you know that is our focus today. So, uh, for uh, the sake of illustration let us take an um, instruction ok because it basically a CPU is executing instruction and depending on the instruction these control signals are generated ok. So, now I am I am going to take one instruction ok. So, but that can be extended to similar instruction and other instruction. So, I am only um, kind of uh, discussing a part of the game, but that is enough to uh, capture the idea. So, let us take an instruction like add A and B ok. That means, um, we are essentially adding the content of the register A and the content of the register B and putting the result back uh, to the content of A. So, it is a kind of two operand instruction um, like the indel um, assembly language instruction or the machine language instruction where when you say add A B it is nothing but A plus B is, is loaded to A ok. So, let us see what happens when such an instruction is executed. So, it is simple uh, you move the content of A uh, to the temporary register then move the content of B to this temporary register 2 then you give select the ALU operation that you say that it is add operation ok. You can imagine there are multiple uh, arithmetic and logic units doing computation which is all parallel which is mux through a mux and you can think of this as selecting the path in the mux ok. This is a select line of the mux which is choosing uh, the connecting the output of the appropriate uh, block uh, to the output of the ALU ok. And this enable is a tri state gate because only one device can drive the bus. So, that has to be enabled when the result is. So, you give uh, the, the operation selection then you enable it then uh, register A is loaded with that result ok. So, that is a kind of macro step of adding A and B, but let us look at little more detail because our idea is the controller has to generate appropriate control signal. So, we have to have clarity in terms of the control signal ok. So, the first operation is moving the content of A to the temporary register 1 ok. So, what we need to do is that we have to enable the register A output. So, give a 1 to register A E which is register A enable then the data comes on the data bus ok and that goes to all inputs all the register input goes. But then the controller has to give a pulse to the TR 1 L which is a temporary register 1 latch signal and it has to be in synchronous with the clock very important. Then the clock edge comes and the data gets latched ok. Unless it is not synchronous it is not going to happen. So, when it is 1 when it is high the active clock edge should come ok that should be taken care and then you disable it ok. So, that is the game. Now, I can tell you a very simple um, idea. So, what we should do is that we give a pulse to R A E and we can give the same pulse to the T R 1 L assume that it is synchronous with the clock. Then uh, the, the A value is enabled because the pulse and it comes here and the clock edge comes it gets latch and the pulse goes to 0 it is disabled ok. Similarly, you would move the register B content into the temporary register to enable A give the same pulse to the latch signal clock comes it gets latched and when the pulse goes 0 this is cut off ok. Now, specify the add operation and that can be some bits from the instruction directly there is may not be kind of decoding is not required you can kind of maybe you can kind of. Uh, uh, you know encode if you need in a another fashion, but may not be required. Same pattern can be given here uh, from the opcode and that can select the, the operation 
or there is a kind of a further encoder which encodes into some less number of bits which can come here and select this operation and this is enable uh, after a clock period after a wait and this is enable and that same signal is given to the register a large same signal means uh, the controller will generate uh, at the same time another signal of the same timing and so it is enable and on the active clock head that is large and when the pass goes 0 that is disable and the add operation is done you know. So A to TR1, B to TR2 add operation enable and the result back to A. So enable is given a pass, latch is given a pass upon the clock it is moved it is disabled. Um, register B, E is given a pass, TR2 L is given a pass and upon the clock it gets latched here and that is disabled and this is given a selection this is enable same pulses similar pulse is coming at the, the latch signal and uh, the data comes here it gets latched and it gets disabled automatically. So that is a kind of sequence so I have written that here in detail uh, move A to TR1 move B to TR2 ALU operation wait and ALU output to register A okay. So now what I am showing is I am showing a possible uh, timing waveform which will achieve this. So assume there is a clock uh, you know going like that which is a say assume a square wave uh, clock. Now this is the timing okay these are two separate output instead of uh, you know drawing it separately I am showing it together I mean this is separate output coming from the controller. Uh, this is not the same signal do not assume that it is same signal it is two separate signal with the same pulse okay. So A enable and TR1 L get similar pulses like it comes with a delay with respect to the active clock edge like that. So at this point the data is A is enabled data is flowing on the data bus so it has enough time before the active clock edge comes. So if you go back to this. Uh, like uh, when you enable something it takes some time for the uh, tri state gate to get enabled and propagated and uh, set up at the input of the register then only the, the clock can latch it. So that is taken care of by this kind of timing. So we are enabling it here at this point data start flowing and it will be ready at the input and when the clock comes the data get latched and the output is disabled okay. Similarly, the B is enabled at this point and in the temporary register 2 it is latched and B is disabled. And I am not specifying the, the um, early operation but that can be uh, taken from the opcode with, it, with a, an encoding if needed and this is early is enabled and the L, 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 sorry uh, the ALU is enabled and that um, data is coming here and gets latched to the A and it is disabled okay. So this simple scheme achieve um, this uh, operation in section uh, add a comma b okay. Now the question is of course you know there are other instructions and one has to maybe uh, if say you can imagine say add b c add a b everything is same. So all that can be easily captured by this, this behavior maybe subtract again things are same only thing is that um, uh, the subtract operation is different. So uh, the controller which is designed the part of the controller which does this can be generalized to do many other things okay. Uh, so that is the basic idea but for you it might look little convoluted that I am kind of orchestrating a scheme very clearly I am pushing the edge little bit to, to the right hand side so that uh, you know the, the, the clock edge comes here. But you, you will see that uh, we what we practically come out with will match this at this point you take it um, I mean you may think it is a kind of manipulation but it, it, it will turn out to be true uh, correctly uh, like the structure will uh, mimic this behavior okay. And, um, and also you should know that um, we are kind of going to have everything in terms of 
uh, integral number of the clock cycle okay. So uh, the basic unit of control is a clock period okay and uh, nothing less than that. So um, we will have a pulse uh, of at least one clock period not, not half clock period. So everything will be decided uh, per clock cycle that should be kept in mind. Now uh, the question is that can the controller be a combination circuit okay because we have studied combination circuit and sequential circuit. So we know that for a combination circuit uh, if given an input say n input it can produce an m output but it cannot definitely produce given an n input um, uh, to a combination circuit it cannot produce a pulse like this you know um, every clock like for 3 clock periods. So this uh, controller cannot be a combination circuit it has to be a sequential circuit okay. Uh, it, it is like given an input it generates a sequence of pulses okay. In this case it looks very neat one pulse then the second pulse and third pulse and so on. So the question is that what type of sequential circuit can generate such a pulse okay. Um, like um, like the, the, the answer is that uh, unfortunately we have studied only the counter now synchronous counter. So I want to straight away ask can we have a synchronous counter generating this kind of pulses you know that is uh, the question we are asking can we use a counter to generate timing pulses be a mode 3 counter like we have a counter uh, which is designed like this you know you have um, uh, a state flip flops uh, which is decoded with the input to generate the next count. Can we have a counter generating a mode 3 counter gener generating this kind of pulses okay. So uh, like this, this thing and we know that a mode 3 counter will count 0, 1 and 2 and it has 2 bits okay. But what we require is separate outputs okay. Now um, so why not, why not we decode this particular pulse from that 0, 0 count okay and we decode this 2 pulses from 0, 1 and we decode uh, this 1, 0 uh, I mean this output from uh, the, the count 1, 0. So that is a basic idea. So we take a counter and what we do is that we do not need 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 we need some outputs. So what we do is that we put a combination circuit here and we generate the output as a decode of the state here okay. So when it is 0, 0 we will generate 2 outputs 1, 0, 1 another 2 outputs, 1, 0 another 2 outputs okay. Now um, we have to design this output logic this is called output logic which uh, the input is a present state and the output is um, the various outputs we need. So we can write the truth table for the output logic in this case. So we have input which is present state uh, in this case 2 bit q1, q0 and there are 6 outputs okay. I said for convenience I have shown uh, these as together but it has to be separate because luckily uh, in this case uh, this has similar pulses but if you are adding b to c uh, then uh, the tr1 latch and the b will have the same kind of pulses. So it has to be separate. So we know that in 0, 0 at least for this case uh, these two as 1 in 0, 1 uh, this um, register b enable and the tr2 as 1 and in the uh, 1, 0 a le enable and the, the, the register a latch as 1 okay. Now it is very uh, simple uh, for each output you pick up 1 form uh, the min terms in terms of q1, q0 optimize it come out with the equation. So uh, like for an example we you take this register a enable that, that you will get as a function of q1 and q0 which is a present state. Similarly you can work out for all other 5 outputs. So we can say output is a function of the present state you know so the output is decoded from the present state and then we say output is a function of the present state okay. So that is how we generate this timing pulses it is complex because we are only 
uh, considering now one instruction we have to kind of um, combine all similar instruction and there maybe this mode 3 business may not work uh, it may not it may have to count in a very complex way uh, making branches and so on depending on the various uh, input. So, you can imagine these are various instruction various group of instruction these inputs and depending on that it will make lot of transition and each transition um, is decoded um, each state is decoded to produce the output by this output logic. So, um, from a from a counter we have graduated to a next level having another logic at the output which is decoding the present state and producing uh, the various outputs ok. Now, um, now you see I have at the, at the, the before coming to this part this kind of um, delay you know that this enable and the latch is delayed by some time with respect to active clock head looked artificial. But now you look at the, the, the diagram we are putting a logic here. So, the clock comes and this present state will change after TCQ time delay. Now, the output will come after the clock edge after TCQ and output logic ok. So, when you implement when you use such a structure to generate this um, kind of um, outputs then you can see that uh, there is a delay with respect to the active clock edge which is nothing but TCQ plus T output logic. So, everything will be delayed and which is required unless it is delayed uh, this, this edge cannot you know latch the data. So, it is very important that, that there is such a delay and that is automatically achieved by this, uh, uh, this particular structure ok. Uh, now, the next question is that we have come out with a a structure which is an extension of a synchronous counter we have added an output logic to the synchronous counter. The next question we ask is fine it can do add a plus b can it do everything what we require you know can we generate whatever timing signals required say example let us forget about a particular instruction let us pose a question uh, that ok. Now, uh, the register A enable and TR1 L has a different pulse uh, shape or a timing. So, at the first clock period it is high then it is 0 then in the third clock period it is high. Similarly, for the second set it is high for consecutive 2 clock cycle which is second clock cycle and third clock cycle. Let us forget about what instruction it implements I am only uh, pausing a hypothetical question uh, you can you can form any kind of pulses ok. Uh, the question is that can we generate whatever timing signals required. So, if you look at this particular structure we can say very definitely yes ok because we are decoding the present state. So, it is not necessary that you have to decode like a, a pulse 1 in the first clock uh, you know clock cycle 0 0 like you can say let us let us make this uh, decode this particular signal as having 1 in the 0 0 and 1 in 0 uh, 1 0. So, then that is done. So, it is very simple that yes it is possible a, a register a enable is nothing but q 1 bar q 0 the 0 0 or um, say q 1 q 0 bar that is 1 0 ok. This is 0 0 0 1 1 0. Similarly, when you come here it is nothing but 0 1 and 1 0. So, you get equation for that register A enable in that case is q 1 bar q 0 bar q 1 q 0 bar which will be kind of um, uh, you know you simplify to q 0 bar ok. Um, similarly, register B enable if you look at this it is q 1 exclusive or q 0 bar. So, what uh, I want to convey is that this particular structure is very generic you know whatever may be the timing requirement in terms of clock period this structure can generate it you know you do not have to worry um, saying that um, uh, the, the, the instruction is different uh, or it is a very complex thing 
it is it is something to do with the program counter the call has come. So, it the current, uh, current address has to be pushed to the stack new address need to be stored uh, how this can be how this is possible and all that ok. So, maybe uh, the diagram I have shown uh, requires some modification for uh, little bit modification probably I do not know uh, maybe some shadow registers are required. But whatever it is it can be done from a controller perspective uh, number of uh, it, it requires to generate a different type of pulses and this structure is able to generate it. So, the what it comes to is that when you talk about a controller uh, this structure or this architecture is very generic it can be used for as uh, used as any any controller like you have a multiplier uh, you need a controller and then uh, this can be used only thing is that depending on the application this next state logic will change because depending on the input and application this transition will change. And at each state the output a number of outputs and the timing of output will change. So, this logic will change. So, depending on the problem depending on the timing uh, this next state logic will change output logic will change number of flip flops will change the transition will change. But we can say this is the, the architecture of a controller general architecture of a controller. Uh, only thing we have to decide for a particular problem is this uh, how many bits are required what is the next state logic what is the output logic ok. So, that is a, the conclusion. So, this is called a finite state machine because uh, this machine goes through the finite number of states it transit through the finite number of states uh, in a complex way it is not that it likes a counter it, it can take branching decision it comes to a state then depending on an input it can go branch to a one in particular state or branch to another state another set of states and so on ok. So, the transition can be complex unlike in a counter. Um, so, uh, that is it it is it is a, a very generic the next question is that is a counter uh, need to be ordered is the state chain need to be ordered that means we said for add instruction we said. Uh, it counts 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 does it have to be ordered can we count 3 0 and 1 or a 3 0 and 2 yes it does not matter it can transit uh, the state does not matter because we are worried about the output and given some set of inputs we need a sequence of output and we do not care too much about how this counter part uh, keep track of the state as long as uh, it is distinct state for each step then we can decode accordingly. So, it is not very important how the state uh, particular numerical value of the state ok it need not be very ordered it can be arbitrary. Uh, so, that problem is called state assignment ok. So, we care only about inputs and output state can be assigned with uh, useful values and that could be of some use ok. Maybe uh, question is that if you assign the states in a particular order maybe this logic get minimized or this uh, this logic get this particular logic get minimized ok. So, uh, the state transition um, the, the, the numerical values are of no consequence um, we can decode and uh, we can change the decoding of uh, truth table of next set logic and truth table of output logic to reflect uh, the state you are assigning the designer is assigning. And as I said it can be assigned uh, to reap some benefit out of that assignment like having uh, the minimal area for the logic and so on ok or to solve some timing problem ok. And so, what is what it means to design and as I said this is called a finite state machine or FSM ok. So, that is uh, the expansion of this finite state machine. So, basically it, mean, it means that you have some inputs depending on the inputs uh, the transition happens state transition happens because in an add a b instruction we have 3 states which is transited and each state generates some output. So, this is the specification ok this is the algorithm and we while designing 
um, at the end of it we design this next state logic and the output logic. So, the, the what it means to design an FSM is that you have a specification of the input, uh, the state transition and the output or the sequence and then from there you come and design the next state table and the output table ok. So, that is a basic um, what it means to design a finite state machine. So, the basic finite state machine or controller, controller is nothing but a finite state machine idea is that there is a counter part which go through various states it is a material whether it goes through uh, in a particular sequence and states are decoded to generate various pulses to control the data path ok. Maybe this control signal will select a MUX, um, give a clock signal to a latch, uh, will enable clock to a register, increment a counter and so on ok. That is what uh, these output signals are used for ok. Uh, they do the sequencing operation of the, the data path like as I said enabling something in the register incrementing a counter, selecting a multiplexer path and so on of course. These are the, the important uh, thing we do with the, the, uh, the sequencing pulses ok. So, let us come back to uh, uh, the, the slide. So, here we look at this um, particular architecture and you see here the output is generated as a decode of the present state ok. Now, in some cases it is convenient uh, we will see that later what is the advantage of doing that or when we can do that. Sometime it is convenient to generate the output not only as a decode of present state, but as a function of both present state and input. So, you can imagine this input is coming here and you uh, decode the output as a function of present state and the input ok. So, it may happen that some outputs are decoded from the present state, some outputs are decoded from the present state and the inputs ok. Now, they when you decode an output from the present state it is called Moore um, machine or Moore output. Um, this is after the mathematician Moore and when you decode an output as a function of present state and input then is called Millet machine, Milli machine ok. So, we have two types of output one is a Milli output when output is decoded from the present state and input a Moore output when the output is decoded from the present state only. So, we can modify that earlier architecture or structure uh, that where the output logic gets not only the present state, but also the inputs ok. So, uh, so we say uh, here the when you say the decoding the next state logic decode the next state as a function of present state and inputs and the output logic when generates some outputs as a function of present state which are called Moore outputs and the, the uh, the output logic decodes some output as a function of present state and inputs which is called milli outputs ok. Now, I should mention that most of the textbooks you have studied in the undergraduate program uh, talks about a milli machine and a Moore machine ok. It is kind of a uh, very kind of simplistic view uh, many a times you would have noticed that uh, the finite state machine you have um, kind of um, seen example is just with many a times one input and one output ok. In such a case it is very easy to call the Millet machine because there is only one output which is Millet output or one output which is Moore output. So, you can call a Moore machine and a Millet machine, but in, in, in practical cases the, the controller or state machine has lot of inputs lot of outputs. Um, so, you cannot call a kind of a, you know Millet machine and Moore machine because um, if even if there is one output which is Millet then you will end up calling that the Millet machine that could confuse um, uh, 
the, the, the design. So, let us keep this kind of distinction. Now, one thing to notice is that now you look at this next state logic. It uh, the input to the next state logic is the present state and the input, and it decodes the next state. Okay. Now, if you look at the output logic, the input to it is the present state and the inputs, and it decodes the output. Okay. Now, why don't we like if you look at the inputs are same, so why don't we combine this together in a block, and we call it logic. The output of the logic is next state and the outputs ok. So, we get a two block view which is nothing but we are combining the next state logic and the output logic. Um, the logic looks at the input and the present state it decode the next state and is also decode the output. So, it is a very useful view because for when we analyze the timing uh, when we do the VHDL coding um, this kind of three block view and the two block view is useful because when we analyze uh, maybe while doing the timing analysis uh, this is easier to look because it is much simpler um, uh, it captures all the kind of data pa uh, various paths together and when you VHDL code maybe you will code this separate this separate and this separate but there could be advantage in coding the logic together uh, you know various ways. So, these two views are very useful please keep this in mind and these two two views and as I said any finite state machine um, the architecture is same only the logic differs or depending on the application depending on the uh, input output timing the logic changes and the number of flip flop change transition change uh, uh, the, uh, the architecture essentially remains same ok. So, that is a description of the two block. Uh, now, let us look at uh, the timing issue of the uh, the, the state machine um, uh, the finite state machine we will use the two block view because it is a much more kind of concise. So, one important thing to look is that there are now two paths uh, from a register output through the next state logic to the to the register other register or the same register we cannot say like if there are three flip flops uh, three I mean three inputs three outputs then there could be nine three into three nine dissing path maximum ok. But very important thing to notice is that there is another path from uh, the through the flip flop through the output logic to the output ok. So, when we consider the maximum clock frequency uh, if you consider only the clock to clock it is not useful because the clock comes then it propagates here propagates here and the setup time is met say we say TCQ plus T next state logic TS um, should be kind of less than the clock period or the clock period should be greater than this. But uh, suppose if the TCQ plus T output logic is even greater than that the transition will happen uh, correctly but the output would not appear uh, at the output. So, what I say is that we will uh, say the clock period the minimum clock period should be maximum of the TCQ plus T next state logic plus T setup time comma or TCQ plus T output logic because the output has to appear at the output ok. And normally um, in most cases if it is kind of close together um, we can imagine that this is kind of larger than this quantity. But one issue is there we do not know where this output is going. Suppose if this output is going through a combination logic and going to another register as part of the control then in that case we have to analyze uh, the path from this particular register through this output logic through the combination logic to the destination register ok. So, in the since I do not have any a priori information about that I have written that, but in real life there could be term like T logic plus T setup time of the destination register may be coming here that you should not forget ok. So, the slack is the margin we give and um, the the whole time violation 
is that the TCQ min uh, the TCQ min plus the mean T next set logic min should be greater than the whole value okay. So that the like when the clock comes um, because of the clock the data at this point changes but that should change only after the whole time as I said it is it is with respect to same clock edge okay. So that is the uh, uh, the essence of it now um, so that is uh, basically the timing. So when we uh, maybe the controller design we can take uh, in the next um, lecture uh, so or maybe we can uh, look at this. So the question is that when you implement a control algorithm um, uh, we basically what we have is an input output timing diagram okay. And from there we have to kind of decide uh, depending on the input what are the transition okay. And, uh, and in each transition what are the outputs required okay. So normally uh, you have a verbal description and a timing diagram from there we have to uh, with respect to input we have to come out with various state sequences and output at each sequence. And at that point there are a lot of possibility it is not that there are only unique uh, kind of way of solving a control problem. So there could be different ways you can solve it something could be optimal. So essentially what I am saying is that it is very difficult to go in one step from a waveform to a next set logic and output logic. So we need to play with it and we need to uh, design that refine that algorithm and you know that in software before writing the code we have an algorithm then we use the, uh, the flow chart and all that. So uh, when we try to think of control algorithm it is it is good if you can play with uh, the, the, the graphical it is graphically so that we can um, capture the basic idea. So uh, similar to the flow chart we do something called a state diagram in designing this state machine um, that is that helps us to kind of visualize um, the control algorithm refine it uh, remove the redundancies and uh, group them and all that you know that that is a thinking process uh, with graphic symbols uh, capturing basically the uh, it should specify what are the inputs uh, with respect to input what are the transition through the state and in each state what are the output this particular diagram should capture that we will see in the next uh, uh, next class and it is called uh, the, the state diagram or uh, sometime it is called uh, ASM chart algorithmic state machine whatever you call uh, uh, that is um, basically um, uh, the idea of designing a control algorithm and that part we will handle it um, in the next lecture. So today what we have looked at basically is uh, uh, one, one quick run uh, basically we have looked at uh, an instruction called uh, add a b and we have seen what are the essential macro steps involved in executing that and we have seen what is the corresponding waveform of, for that uh, of the signals for that particular operation. And we have laid out a possible waveform and we uh, kind of worked out how this pulses can be generated and we, we said it cannot be generated out of a combination circuit, we need a sequential circuit and in this case we said that it can be generated out of a mode 3 counter and by decoding the um, uh, out uh, the present state and putting an output logic to decode it. Uh, the next question and that can be uh, you know kind of implemented by writing the truth table and that is the truth table we have seen and you can kind of uh, get a function output as a function of the present state. Then we the next question we have asked and we have seen that this particular delay comes naturally because of the TCQ and the T output logic. And then we ask whether this is enough to generate all kinds of timing signals is it a generic architecture. So we put some arbitrary waveform and we said yes it is fine because that output logic can be changed the truth table can be changed to generate any kind of waveform in terms of the clock period does not matter in this case the answer was yes and 
we have seen that answer we have seen that decoding and um, we also said that there is no necessity that the state um, transition goes through a particular neat sequence it can be any arbitrary sequence as long as we properly decode it. So, there is no need to worry about how it counts uh, this counterpart, uh, but uh, that can be made use in minimizing the area of logic and so on. And essentially what we have is an input output waveform. So, we come out with state transition and output ultimately from that we generate this next state table and the output table. And we have captured the finite state machine as a counter going through various states with an output logic to decode to generate the output logic. And we said that uh, sometime it is convenient to decode the output as a function of present state and input, uh, then it is called Millet output. If it is a decode of present state, it is called a Moore output. And we also said there is another convenient way of looking at is combining these two blocks together because both get the same input. So, that is shown here uh, where uh, the logic generate the next state and the output. And the, the last thing we have looked at is the timing issue which is similar uh, to a counter, but additional path is an output. So, that is captured in the, uh, in the clock uh, period. Definitely it comes for um, um, I mean that has to be analyzed because this output can go through another combination circuit and reach a uh, register in that case this has to be modified. So, which looks similar to the uh, to the counter because after all the counter is a finite state machine ok. So, counter is also a, a, a specific example of a finite state machine where output is not decoded ok. So, uh, now do not uh, like though for illustrating I said I kind of work from the counter to the state machine ok. Do not do not think that the state machine is a counter, but it is other way you know state machine is more generic. We can say uh, a synchronous counter is is a finite state machine is a, a, a specific case of a finite state machine not the other way just for grasping it you know from kind of evolving it from the counter is convenient that is why I have discussed this way, but uh, do not say that the finite state machine is a counter a counter is a finite state machine so other way. So, uh, please now it is a very important topic once you grasp uh, this basic architecture the timing um, you can master the design this is very many a times very much lacking in textbooks because textbooks uh, to show some practical cases it takes lot of uh, pages and pages it is very difficult to kind of describe in textbook that is why people do not handle it. So, um, please revise this uh, go through the reference book understand it well um, we can continue in the next class with the designing. So, I wish you all the best and thank you.